This is the left eye of a 75-year-old man who presented to us with diminished vision for two years. On examination, he had a brown cataract and a pupillary diameter of approximately six millimeters. So, small incision cataract surgery was planned. A superior approach is performed since the patient had with the rule astigmatism of two diopters. Initially, the conjunctival pyridomy is done. A bipolar cautery is used to cauterize the bleeding scleral vessels in order to provide good scleral visualization. Using a number 15 surgical blade, a moderate round shaped incision of around 8 millimeters is made. The crescent blade is then used to swipe along the tunnel until the right plane is achieved. And then, with wriggling movements, the corneal part of the tunnel is being constructed. Swiping movements are performed on both sides, and the sclerocorneal tunnel is completed. Using a 1.6 millimeter blade, the paracentesis is made on the right side and a partial paracentesis is made on the left side. Intracameral adrenaline is injected to achieve maximum mydriasis. An air bubble is then injected, followed by tripan blue to paint the anterior lens capsule. An additional air bubble is injected to improve the tripan blue stain. Viscoelastic is injected between the two lips of the tunnel to facilitate a smooth entry of the keratome. Viscoelastic is then injected to form the anterior chamber, thereby preventing its collapse during the keratome entry. Using a bevel down keratome, the anterior chamber entry is completed. The anterior chamber is filled again with viscoelastic. Multiple sphincterotomies were planned due to the pupillary size. The cuts are made at the 6 o'clock position, as well as the 4.30 position, the 7.30 position, the 9.30 position, and the 2 o'clock position, creating a pentagon-shaped large pupil. It is very important to space the cuts as evenly as possible to provide a uniform shape. It is also very important to not have large iris tags, as they can get sucked into your Simcoe cannula. Using a bent cystitome, a capsular rexus is initiated. And, using capsule forceps, a large rexus is being completed. As the nucleus is very large, a bimanual nuclear prolapse is performed. First, with the Sinsky hook, the nucleus is held firmly at the mid-periphery and is tilted towards the nasal side. Then, a spatula is passed through the left-sided paracentesis and underneath the nuclear equator. The edge of the nucleus is then lifted and the Sinsky hook is used to dial the rest of the nucleus into the anterior chamber. Viscoelastic is injected below and above the nucleus so as to protect the posterior lens capsule and the corneal endothelium. Using an irrigating vectus, the tunnel is depressed and the nucleus is explanted. Using a Simcoe cannula with irrigation, all the cortical material in the anterior chamber is flushed out. This is followed by a cortical wash. In such cases, there is very minimal cortex and it is very peripherally located. It is always safer to perform cortical wash through the paracentesis in such cases. The eye is filled with viscoelastic and a three-piece acrylic lens is gently dialed into the bag. The viscoelastic is then removed. The paracentesis are hydrated 
and the conjunctiva is cauterized. Intracameral moxifloxacin is then given. Thank you.